Hey guys, welcome to All The Right Bites, same same but vegan, where we take family favorite recipes and make them vegan. Today we are making a one skillet pierogi pizza inspired by a old favorite of mine, the Boston Pizza pierogi pizza, which I can no longer have because it's not vegan. So instead I have come up with a same same but vegan version of the pierogi pizza. So I hope you like it. Hey guys, welcome to step one of our homemade vegan Boston pizza and style pierogi pizza. This step is really all about making the dough and honestly this dough could not be more simple. Uh, we have our self-rising flour and I have my favorite vegan yogurt. Uh, for me, I really like silk oat. I just like the taste. Um, and so all we're going to do to make our dough is we combine the two. So I'm going to start with the flour. This is our self-rising flour. And we need one and a half cups of the self-rising flour. Um, you can buy self-rising flour, um, but if you just have all-purpose flour, there is a way to make it self-rising. You have to add, I believe it's baking powder and salt. Um, but because I keep a full stock pantry, we have self-rising flour. So it is a cup and a half of self-rising flour. And then it is a cup of the yogurt. And literally that is all that goes into this dough. So what I like to do is I take my knife, mix it all up, because at first the yogurt is pretty cold. So we're just gonna keep mixing it until we have a ball of dough that forms. We are on to step two, which is to knead your pizza dough. Uh, so to do this, you're gonna wanna lightly flour your surface and this is fun, but it does take a while. So I'm gonna have a lightly floured surface. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my dough ball that is in this bin, and I'm gonna put it on the surface. And so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna knead it on the lightly floured surface and just add bits of flour until it is a smooth, not sticky ball. Um, so this one is pretty sticky. So I'm gonna add some more flour and you keep kneading it, and we're actually gonna knead it for a whole eight minutes. So you just keep working with the dough and adding more flour as you go. And eventually your ball of dough will be not sticky and nice and smooth and ready for your pizza. So now that we've kneaded the dough, it should look like this, a nice smooth pizza ball. Uh, the next step is actually really easy. We're just going to let the dough rest. So I put it off to my side of my workbench and I'm going to let, let it rest for 15 minutes. And so I use this time as a really good way to kind of prep the uh, next steps. And that would be my toppings and my skillet. So we're on to step four and step four is to prep your skillet. So this is a normal cast iron skillet. It is 12 inches in diameter. And what we're gonna do is we wanna make this really, really hot. So if you've ever made pizza on a pizza stone, you never put pizza dough on a cold stone. You also never put pizza in a cold skillet. So I have preheated my oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm about to go throw this in the oven for 20 minutes. And then by the time the dough is done resting, this will be nice and hot, and we'll be ready to make our pizza. Hey guys, so we are on to step five, and step five is to prepare our toppings. So there are two main toppings that I like to use on this uh, pizza, and that is Italian sausage, just because I don't like um, vegan bacon as much. So I do use a vegan Italian sausage, and then potatoes. Those are the two main ingredients for a pierogi pizza. And so right now we're gonna start with the potatoes, and the potatoes are really easy to prep. I have my mandolin uh, to make the slices nice and even. I've got a bowl of ice water, and I have a potato. So normally I only need about one potato for this, unless I'm feeding more than one person. And so all I'm gonna do is slice the potato nice and thin. I use the mandolin and not a knife to slice it because it's just easier and it's more consistent. You get really beautiful potato slices um, that are consistent in thickness for the entire pizza. So once I've got all my slices, um, I'm just gonna put them in the cold water and I do this because it removes all the starch. And so you get much crispier potatoes to bite through once they're cooked. And then there you go. Our potatoes are prepped. You leave them in the cold water for about 20 minutes while the bread proofs and the skillet warms up. Uh, this recipe is a lot of waiting, but I promise you it's worth it.
So we are still on step five. Uh, we're just on 5B, basically, and we're preparing our second topping. And our second topping is a Beyond Bratwurst sausage. Spicy, because I like things spicy. Um, I've removed the casing, and I'm just grilling it up in a pan so it gets like a sausage crumble. So you want to break it into a lot of small pieces and just kind of keep cooking it until it's nice and golden brown. And it is so much better than bacon on pizza. So trust me, you're gonna to wanna to use the sausage. It's time for the next step, which is super fun, and it is actually just rolling out our dough. And so all you wanna to do to roll out your dough is lightly flour your surface so your dough doesn't stick. You take your beautiful rested dough ball. I like to put a little bit of flour on top so it doesn't stick to my rolling pan. And then you're just going to give her, roll her out. Uh, I like a thicker crust, but you can really make your crust kind of as thin or as thick as you want. This dough ball is enough dough for a 12 inch pizza. Uh, and I like to roll mine out to be about 13 inches because I like a good folded over crust. Um, I find that those work really well for dipping. So we're just going to roll this out into the shape of a pizza. It's a nice round circle. Um, and I do like to flip it in between and just because it makes it easier to roll. And so we're going 13 inches is our goal. So guys, it is now the best part of making pizza. It is time to actually make the pizza. I will let you know that this is a perfectly seasoned cast iron pan. So if you have a perfectly seasoned one, you can just put the dough right in it. Uh, if you do not have a perfectly seasoned cast iron pan, uh, you will have wanted to season it beforehand and brush a, a little bit of extra olive oil in it. But we're going to get to it. I will tell you this pan is very, very hot. I can literally feel it radiating heat from me. And that's just simply because it was in an oven that's 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So be very careful when making your pizza and maybe don't have little kitties around. So the first step is to take our dough. So I'm just gonna take my dough and lie the dough into the pan and move it around. And so like I said before, I do like to have a crust on mine. So my next step is always to brush the dough in olive oil and fold down the crust. So I like to just brush some olive oil down around where the crust is going to fold so it sticks a bit better. And I'm just using a basting brush. So next it's time to fold down my crust. I do this with a fork and I do this with a fork because the pan is really hot. So if you're using your fingers, you will burn yourself. But we're just going to burn, flop down the edges so that they stick. with the fork. So my next crust is now made. The next step is one that my boyfriend kind of got me hooked on. And so I'm gonna brush the crust with olive oil um, because I like to put seasoning on the crust. Uh, he knows that the crust is my favorite part, and so he first recommended, when we had a pizza making contest, he added some seasoning to the crust, and he kind of won. So I do that now. Uh, my first seasoning is garlic salt, just because you can never go wrong with garlic. And so I just sprinkle some garlic salt around the crust. And you can sprinkle it on the whole pizza if you want, if you really like some extra seasoning. And my next seasoning is Italian seasoning. Pizzas are Italian, Italian seasoning is delicious. So I'm just gonna sprinkle it on. And then it's time to assemble the rest of the pizza. So for a pierogi pizza, there is no tomato base. Instead, it is sour cream. Uh, I make my own vegan sour cream from cashews. And if you're interested in figuring out how, you can check out my Instagram page. I do quick five minute recipes there. And I actually did the homemade vegan sour cream this week. So I'm just gonna plop it on and spread it around. But you can use store-bought. Um, I know that Real Canadian Superstore has a really great deal on some sour cream. So you can use vegan sour cream that you've bought. Um, but there is nothing quite like homemade. So I'm just gonna scoop that all out, give it a nice sour cream layer. Mm. And then next is the potatoes. So the potatoes are cut nice and thin. I've dried them off. Make sure you dry them. You don't want them to be soggy. And I'm just going to lay them out on my pizza. These are really big potatoes, so we don't actually need that many. Uh, 
and we get them all in there nice. So I've got my potatoes. Next comes my favorite part, the sausage crumble. You saw us grill it. All we're gonna do now is take the little pieces and sprinkle them over the pizza. And the more sausage, Italian sausage you use, the vegan bratwurst, uh, if it's spicy, the spicier pierogi pizza will be. Uh, if you're like me and you want extra spice, you can add jalapenos, jalapenos, however you want to say it, uh, but sausage is enough. And then the true secret to an epic pierogi pizza is two cheeses. So I start off with mozzarella. It's a pizza, mozzarella. I use uh, veal life is my favorite vegan cheese. I find that it actually melts really well and it gives it a really nice taste and flavor. So veal life, mozzarella first. And then because anybody who has ever had or made pierogies will tell you, cheddar cheese. Cheddar cheese is the secret. So my pierogi pizza has two cheeses, mozzarella veal life and cheddar cheese veal life. And I don't think you can ever go wrong with too much cheese. So I like to really cover it with cheese. And then it's ready to bake. So all I'm gonna do is throw this in my oven for 25, for about 25 minutes or until the cheese really starts to bubble. And we'll see it when it's done. So the pizza is done. I've just pulled it out of the oven. Again, skillet very hot. It's time to remove, and as you can see, it literally just pops out. Woo, hot. But here we have a beautiful pierogi pizza. So all there is left to do now is to serve it. And so all you have to do is slice it. And it is nice. It's got that nice crisp crust that I like. This pizza is perfect for eight slices. Two, so we have a beautiful pizza here ready to serve. And final step before serving it, just to add that little Boston pizza flavor, is a nice big dollop of sour cream right at the end. That was always my favorite part. And some fresh green onions. And I'm telling you, this pizza is so delicious, you will no longer miss Boston Pizza's pierogi pizza. Enjoy.